A Township Tale is a great game, but does a poor job at teaching the player how to do much after the initial tutorial. I hope these three videos can help players know everything there is to know about the game. While this tutorial is recorded on the PC VR version of the game, Quest players should be able to follow along seamlessly. While many features of the game are absent in the Quest version as of writing, everything else should be identical to the PC VR version. To see updated Quest compatibility, check the pinned comment. In the video, I will be going over everything in town, how to get food, cooking, stewing, carpentry, blacksmith, crafting, and the town hall. To learn about the wilderness, like the forest and mines, check out part 2. If you have not completed the tutorial island yet, go back to the tutorial walkthrough. Both are linked at the top of the description. Timestamps for everything in the video are also in the description. In case you don't know, to customize your avatar, you can grab these and place the items on your character. Use the knob to scroll through the options, and swipe with your hand to scroll through the page. Use the paintbrushes on your right for primary and secondary colors. Anything with this talum icon will need to be purchased with real money. This machine on the left over here will create a small doll of your creation, Place it on the table to your right to save it. You can put the doll on your character to quickly equip it. Step on the thing behind you in order to join the server. As you have used the flint hatchet in the tutorial, you should understand that the flint hatchet can be used for both chopping trees and mining rocks. While it does get the job done, there are better options available. Axes do a lot better at chopping trees, as well as doing more damage to Groteras. Pickaxes can mine much faster, as well as mine higher tiers of ore, and will of course do more damage to Turabatas. Swords are good for all around combat. Side blades can be added to tools to add more damage area. Small daggers can be swung fast for multiple hits per second, but with lower damage. Bows and arrows are good for all around combat, but from afar. Hammers can be used in combat but not many people do so. Hammers are best used for smithing, carpentry, or crafting. Chisels can be used alongside hammers for carpentry, decrafting, and removing heads from handles. Shovels also exist. They can be used to dig up things like geodes or wooden crates. Not a lot of people carry shovels around. Bonus fact. While walking normally is comfortable for many, including myself, Teleporting is not something to forget about. Holding the teleport button and waiting a second will allow you to teleport, and timing it right can make you move much faster than normally walking or sprinting. I use this all the time to get around quicker, and I recommend you do the same. There are two main sources of food that people use often, spriggle meat and pumpkins. You can find and kill spriggles all around town, the mountain pass, and the forest, but a good concentration of spriggles appear along the archery shrine path from the town hall. Once you collect enough meat, you can create a fire with three logs and a dry grass. Instead of logs, you can use coal or sticks if you have them. Light it up and add more fuel if necessary. If you want to go cheap, you can just use the torches in the blacksmith to cook your food. Remember, you can cut meat with a knife or sword but only certain blades can cut food without breaking it. The other option for food is pumpkins. You can find pumpkins in the valley or in the forest. Players can also plant pumpkins by cutting up green pieces and planting them around town. Find an orange pumpkin and pick it up with both hands. Throw it at the ground or hit it with a melee weapon to break it. Be careful not to break the plant's stems or else no more pumpkins can grow from the plant. You can cook the pumpkin eighths and keep them on your inventory. You can either eat the eighths by themselves, or you can cut them into chunks. 
Cutting pumpkins into chunks will give more total nutrition, but will fill up your fullness meter faster. You can choose which you prefer. Dice meat may also be common among richer players, but since you're new, it's not easily obtainable. Since you are new, don't be afraid to ask other players for food if you need it to get by. In case you don't understand how the hunger system works in the game, the orange bar is called the nutrition bar, and the yellow lines above that are called the fullness meter. If the orange bar is full, you have eaten all the nutrition you need. If the orange bar goes underneath this line, you will no longer be able to sprint, and if it goes behind the second line, you will start starving to death and die. It is good to keep the nutrition meter full, or at least above half. The fullness meter has five bars in total. Eating food will fill your fullness meter. Once the meter is full, you can no longer eat any food until the meter goes down again. Be careful to keep your fullness low or else you won't be able to eat food to regain health if you need to in combat. For healing, according to the wiki, cooked spriggle meat chunks heal for one, while a cooked pumpkin eighth heals eight, and a cooked pumpkin chunk heals four. Something I feel may be important to say is to please clean up after yourself. Killing spriggles drops feathers, and eating or slicing meat drops bones. Eating apples drops apple cores, and making a fire leaves ash. Please clean up after yourself. Leaving items on the ground will lag the server, and make it harder for you and other players to play. You can drop feathers or bones in shelves around town or in chests. You can eat bones to completely delete them, but it will take a while. You can burn apple cores at a campfire, and you can break camp ash by hitting it with a weapon. Do what you can to stop server lag from happening. The carpentry building is used for making things out of wood. Go find the book on the podium and use the joystick to turn the pages, or you can turn the pages with your other hand. If the book is not on the podium, it may be on the floor. If you cannot find it, light the candle. To choose what you want to make, grab the page, preferably from the top, and rip it out of the book. If the page you want is not there, then you may need to find the page out in the wild. Pick up the page and drop it in the air and it will teleport back to the book. Put the book back on the podium and drop the page into the frame. Throw the wood into the chiseling deck. You will need six chunks per segment. You will know how many segments a recipe needs from the illustration at the top of the page. You can refund your wood by moving the clamp forward and off the table. When you have the correct amount of segments, the page will shine a blue highlight onto the chunk of wood. You can chip away at it with a chisel and hammer, but if you are new, you won't have these yet. You can use a rock on a stick as a hammer and a single flint as a chisel. Holding the chisel to the highlighted part of the wood and hit the end of the flint with a hammer. Hit the highlighted piece until it pops off. Continue doing that until the bark falls off. You can rotate the wood by pulling the lever to your left. If you chisel the wrong piece of bark off, you will break the recipe. Once all the bark is off, there will be no more highlights and you can hit the remaining chunks in any order you want. Once all the chunks are off, you can hit the center piece, which will crack. Now you are all done. The flint chisel and stone hammer will work for oak just fine, but with stronger wood, you will want to make a real chisel and hammer. The blacksmith is used for working with metals. If it's metal, it's probably done here. There are three things of the blacksmith that are important. The smelter, the desmelter, and the anvil. First, the smelter. If you find ore, you can throw it into the smelter and it will smelt down into ingots. Make sure you fully close the latch or the materials will not go in. Make sure the smelter has fuel in it. Pushing the air pump up and down is not exactly necessary, but will make the process work faster. You can put ingots into the front again and it will create whatever mold is in the smelter. The mold will tell you how many ingots are needed to create it, and will also show how many of those items will be created if applicable. 
If you do not find the mold in the mold rack, you will need to find the mold in the wild and bring it back to the blacksmith by hand. You can also create alloys in the smelter. Take the mold out and put in the required amount of ore or ingots. An easy alloy to remember is red iron, which takes one copper ingot and one iron ingot. You can find other alloys on the wiki. Alloys like red iron are not available at first. If this gem is not in the smelter, you will need to complete the first combat trial to get it. As of writing, the combat trials are not on quest, so quest players do not need to worry about this. Not until the combat trials are added, however. If you want to take any ingots or ore out of the smelter, pull this lever to the left of the input. Please clean up the molds you use. You can either put the molds back in the shelves yourself, or you can throw them at this wall. When you smelt an item, like a blade or chisel, it will come out thick and blunt. In order to give it an edge, throw it in the hot coals outside, wait for it to heat up, and then hold it above the anvil and hit it with a hammer. You must hit the blade on all spots it needs sharpening on. You will know the blade is done when you see a blue shatter effect over the blade. You can now put it on a handle. Some swords cannot be put on handles unless you have a guard. Some things do not need to be forged, like pommels, guards, pickaxe heads, hammers, arrowheads, and buckles. If you are unsatisfied with the tool you have made, or if you find any metal around the world, you can melt them down in the desmelter. The desmelter does not give you a one-to-one -one ratio, so desmelting is a loss of materials. But if you weren't going to use it anyways, might as well get your ingots back. Make sure there is fuel in the furnace. Then, throw the metals you wish to melt into the hopper. You need to put the items in one by one. The items cannot be in a pouch. You must push the air pump up and down for the flames to start. Once the pieces become hot enough, they will melt and you can collect your ingots to the right. The last thing in the blacksmith is the deconstructor. Put a tool into it and chisel the head off of the handle. This is how you can remove heads from handles. You can also do this with arrowheads. The crafting house is where you can craft complex things from multiple materials. This is where you go if you want to craft backpacks, lanterns, spotlights, nets, and other things. It is also where you go if you want to decraft something. To craft something, grab the book on the center podium and find what you want to craft. Materials needed to craft it are shown on the lines. A normal line means 1, and a dotted line means 10. For example, a normal bag will require 7 leather straps, 2 leather rolls, and 11 buckles. Rip the page of the thing you want to craft and place it into the assembly deck. Use the swivels to reorient the bench to your liking. Hold the material over the blue highlight until it turns green, and then let go. If a highlight of the nail appears, hit it with a hammer. If you take too long to hammer in your nails, the material will pop off. If you bend the nail or hit the nail too hard, it will break the material. If you bend a nail or almost break the material, I recommend just waiting for the timer to end and restarting from there. If you are making a backpack, I recommend making a real hammer. And if you have the spare gold, make a golden hammer. Gold hammers deal the least amount of damage to nails, 
which makes them excellent for crafting complicated recipes. But for now, a copper hammer should do fine. To decraft an item, you will need a chisel and a hammer, or a flint and rock hammer. You must chisel the separate parts of the item in the reverse order that they were crafted in. The two most common items that are decrafted are the cauldron and bucket. I will show these as examples for decrafting. Take the page out and drop the item onto the deck. If you hold the chisel over the next decraftable part, the controller will vibrate. For the cauldron, get the top three handles and then the buckles. Finally, the base pot. For the bucket, you will need to chisel the bottom off first. And then you can go to the handles, the buckles, and finally the wood and rims. Now you can melt the individual pieces down to get iron. Buckets give one more metal plate and are therefore more profitable than cauldrons. There are three things in the town hall that are important. The lockbox, the bank, and the coin press. To use the lockbox, place your hand over the hand icon and hold grip. After a second, six inventory slots should appear. You can put your items into these slots. No one can take these items from you and they stay here even after you die. The default map has lockboxes only in the town hall, but other community servers, like the round table, can have lockboxes in other places for convenience. To the left of the lockboxes, the bank is a useful place to store your coins. To use it, hold grip on the hand icon. If you have any coins in your bank, they will appear here. If you do not have any coins, don't worry. Go to the mailbox located just outside of the town hall and open it. When you are new to the server, you will automatically get 20 coins for free upon opening the mailbox. Go back to the bank and drop the coins into the hopper. The coins should go into the holder. To withdraw coins, pull the lever up or down and take coins out of the slot. The last important thing in the town hall is the coin press on the second floor. Place a gold ingot in the press and pull the lever. One gold ingot will make five gold coins. There are some other spots in town which are not super important, but still have some good uses. The tavern is a building that is used for creating soups and other food. While you can use it to make stews, that's lame and boring and lame. Anyways, you can craft stews by getting a cauldron and filling it with water. You can find recipes for what you want in the tavern book. Some servers have water placed next to the tavern, but if you don't see any, you can use the water at the blacksmith. You can cook anywhere you can make a fire, so you are not limited to only cooking in the tavern. Throw four pieces of food in the boiling cauldron and wait for it to finish cooking. You can find recipes and what they do in the tavern book. You can add garlic for 10% more nutrition or add rock salt to improve buffs by 10%. While the tavern itself can be used for cooking stews, what most people use this building for is chest cooking. Chest cooking allows people to easily cook many items at once. You can do this with any chest in the world, but is more commonly done with the tavern chests. In order to chest cook, make sure all but one of the item slots are full of trash items, like bones, sticks, or anything that you will not be cooking with. Next, place dry grass as close to the chest as you can. I like to place it under it. 
Next, place three logs close to the dry grass and smack two flint together to light the flame. On the outside, cook one or more of the items you wish to cook normally, or have a pre-cooked one on hand. Throw the cooked item into the chest and watch it go into the item slot. Throwing an item into the chest will make the item go into any empty item slots. You may see where I'm going with this. Throw all the raw food items into the chest. After a few seconds, the food will be cooked and will immediately go into the chest item slot, freeing up more space for you to throw in more raw food. Cook until you are satisfied. Something important to remember is that because you are throwing a lot of items on the ground and that they are stacking on top of each other, chest cooking can cause server lag, so please be considerate. Also, please remember to be courteous and leave any flint, dry grass, or wooden logs in the shelf behind you for other players to use. Bonus fact! Do not steal the cauldrons from the tavern. If you do, I will find where you live. People use these things to cook. Go find buckets or cauldrons in the dust bowl, mountain pass, mines, hippios camps, or the forest. Do not steal from other players. The market is split up into two sections. The main market and the town hall market. You can buy items from other players using these machines. You can also sell your own items here. But it can be expensive to rent to these machines, and if you are new, you probably don't have anything worth selling in bulk. To buy an item from these machines, throw the necessary amount of coins in the front hopper. They will be collected, and the item for sale will pop out of the machine. This building, close to the pond, has three of these rock thingies inside. Step on them in order to change your look in the server. Turn around and step on the rock thing to exit again. Finally, the respawn structure is where you respawn if you die or if you drink a teleport potion. It also has a nice map, allowing you to see where other players are on the server.